Hello, my name is Anton Warstedt and I'm with the Vienna University of Economics and Business. Together with my co-authors, I've been writing this paper on blockchain censorship and I'm happy to present it to you now. First, here we can see the contributions. First, we try to demystify censorship in permissionless blockchain, which means we provide a comprehensive overview of blockchain censorship. Second, we focus on defi defining censorship and highlighting the role of validating nodes in the consensus layer, and also how smart contracts at the application layer can influence transaction execution. And finally, we provide an empirical analysis of censorship, thereby um, focusing on the OFAC sanctions and how they impacted the whole Ethereum ecosystem. We split the paper in different parts. First, we focus on pre-PBS um, times when there was no um, proof of stake and we didn't have proposal builder separation. Miners were the only um, entities involved in block, in block constructions. And when the Tornado Cash um, contracts were sanctioned, we could already see many miners obeying the sanction and stop accepting Tornado Cash transactions. The same could be seen after the transition to proof of stake when PBS was rolled out. So we could see that block builders, those now responsible for building the blocks, started censoring. In the picture below, you can see the inclusion of certain builders, and you might already see certain builders have a very, very significantly low tornado cache inclusion, which might point to them being censoring. We can see the same at the relay front. So relays are basically the trusted entities sitting between builders and proposers forwarding blocks from the builder to the proposer and establishing the required trust. Um, also relays simulate blocks and thereby can censor um, transactions by simulating a block, checking if it has some censorable content and then excluding the block by not relaying it. Third, Proposers, of course, proposers are the new miners, and also proposers can censor the blockchain by just not um, connecting to a relay that is non-censoring, or by building blocks themselves, which is called vanilla building, and thereby ensuring that censorable content doesn't make it on-chain. Finally, there is the application layer, so every application is free to implement code that blacklists or, um, or freezes certain um, funds um, when, when or blocks users from using the application. And we could see that around the Tornado Cash sanctions, many applications in this picture, stablecoin started um, yeah, blacklisting um, certain users, while other stablecoins like Binance USD or USDP um, followed that approach um, later. Finally, we'll also analyze confirmation latency and especially focusing on Tornado Cash users and could already see that Tornado Cash users had to wait longer for their transactions to be included. The thing is, for Tornado Cash, this might not be the, the biggest problem, but for other applications that very much rely on a timely um, transaction execution, they might, um, they might have big problems as soon as they are sanctioned and their transactions are not included in a timely manner. Thank you very much.